one, two, three. We're just getting the live stream started and letting people jump on before we get going. It's like church, it got so quiet. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. My name's Liz Kearns. I'm the board chair. I would like to thank you all for coming and welcome you to seeing our vision for 2029. It's a plan that many people have been working on and we're pleased to have you here. That's the end of my job. So I am introducing Father Hage, who's going to give our opening prayer. Welcome, everyone. It's great to be here tonight. I just can't thank you enough for making the time to be present uh, here. And also a warm welcome to those who are joining us by way of live stream. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, as we make decisions that might affect the students, staff, faculty, alumni, and friends of Notre Dame. And continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you and your name, and for the service of all humanity. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe we have next, is it? Uh, Amy, Amy, I'm going to pleasure to introduce our Catholic school, superintendent of the schools, Amy Sansone. Just a joy, she's been walking with us uh, for the last couple of months. Let's give her a huge round of applause. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Father, very much. It's my pleasure to be here this evening with the Notre Dame community and also to welcome those who are streaming along from home and from afar. The Catholic Schools Office is proud to have been part of the development of the strategic plan of the Notre Dame school system. We are proud of the students here, the parent support, the teachers who work so hard, and just excited about this vision that has been put together and use so many different stakeholders and those engaged in so many different levels to look at the future of Notre Dame schools. The graphic that you see behind you is talking about the Catholic School Improvement Survey. And this is something that all of our schools, the 21 schools throughout the seven counties in our diocese, give every year to students, fourth grade on up, to teachers, but most importantly to parents. We're so excited that the parents every year have an opportunity to give feedback on the schools. They look at all different areas of the school, and we call it a 360 look. We don't just look at instruction, we look at safety, we look at your Catholic identity, we look at facilities, we ask about school lunches, and it's anonymous. So the feedback we get is honest and real and sincere. So the good news is we're excited that each year, this has been about five years we've been giving this survey here, we've seen more and more respondents. The data you see behind me is the respondents of last year versus this year. So we like to see that more and more people each year return the surveys that shows that the parents, the teachers and students are engaged in care. We love the good news we see. Behind me you can see the overall satisfaction rating and more importantly the recommendation rating because there's no higher praise than a student saying yes, I would recommend this school to my friends and to their children because we are so pleased and satisfied with our child's experiences there. We're excited to see the areas, as you can note behind me, that parents have told us we are feeling this is an optimum. This is the way it should look and should feel and our kids should experience it. But we also value these surveys because it gives us areas to look at that need a closer examination because it needs improvement. So we also have that information. I didn't share it here this evening, but we've heard repeatedly in areas such as extracurriculars or co-curriculars during the school day that parents want more choices or they want different choices. And all this information is shared every year with your board and your principal and your teachers. And this year, most importantly, it was given to the strategic planning committee. So they had that real, live, honest data from the stakeholders to help them inform their strategic plan. So I just once again would like to say that we're pleased to be here this evening. We are pleased that we come to every single board meeting every month. We are so excited because we get to go into your schools and participate in the celebrations as well as just daily activities with the students and the teachers. And we're just gratified for the dedication, the love of our Lord that we see in the schools, the academic excellence, 
the sports excellence. We are excited to follow the girls basketball team and we're just happy to be part of that to support your community in any way that we can from the Syracuse Diocese. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Well, for those who don't know me, my name is Rick Hensel. I'm the associate principal and incoming principal of Notre Dame Junior Senior High School. So welcome to the Monsignor Willenberg Center. Thanks for being here as we uh, present to you Vision 2029. I just wanna give you an overview um, of the process for our strategic plan here. Um, together with Brian McQueen, who's a member of our board of trustees, I co-chaired um, the strategic planning committee. So as you can see behind me, um, this was mandated by our board of trustees and essentially what it came down to was um, a selection of a committee of about 20 individuals who spanned all of our key stakeholder groups. That would include our faculty and staff, obviously administration, um, board members, parents, uh, and current students, believe it or not. So we had a, a pretty good slate of individuals um, and a good cross section um, of experiences here at Notre Dame schools. Um, over three intensive days, um, that committee of about 20 individuals sat down for three three-hour sessions um, and really looked at each of the six pillars that are identified in the plan. That includes enrollment, academics, staffing and student experience, finances, and leadership. So again, that cross-section of all those stakeholder groups looked at each of those six areas um, and identified goals and objectives for each of those. So that's what that uh, process really looked like. Um, integral to that, first and foremost, was looking at our mission. Um, who are we as a school community? Um, what do we believe? What do we value? And that took the shape and um, evaluating our current mission statement, making some revisions there, um, as well as identifying our core values and a vision for the future. So with that in mind, um, I'll turn it over to Father Hage, who will share with you the product of that uh, mission, vision, and values. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hensel, appreciate it. So this uh, mission statement came about, as Rick just said, uh, after a three-day intensive period with all uh, interested parties and stakeholders. And I think uh, you really can't begin the work of strategic planning until you revisit your mission statement. The mission statement is actually brand new. Uh, and it's more in line with the diocesan mission statement as well as other mission statements that are coming out of area Catholic schools in the Diocese of Syracuse as they move through their own strategic plans. So the mission statement reads as such, Notre Dame Catholic Schools provides a faith-based educational experience for children in grades pre-K through 12 in a nurturing and intellectually stimulating environment that prepares our students to successfully pursue lives committed to community with integrity, compassion, and service. And I just love that emphasis that we're trying to form young people who are going to be community oriented uh, with an emphasis on integrity and compassion. And most especially that word compassion as we talk about the dignity of the human person later on. The vision statement says this, we aspire to an educational experience that prepares many more young minds to meet the increasing demands of our modern world. Through cultivating our students' embrace of the myriad challenges facing our people and societies, of the rich diversity of religions, cultures, and traditions, of dramatic advances in technology. So while we stand firmly in our Catholic tradition and our vision statement, we're also going to actively and in, in, in proactive ways help our young people embrace the diversity of religions, cultures, and traditions present in our own student body and beyond. And finally, our value statement, the virtues of faith, hope, and charity guide us in every aspect of our educational enterprise, fostering a commitment to lives lived with honesty, integrity, compassion and respect for the dignity of others. So the three virtues that we lean on in our educational experience are faith, hope, and love. And that's all aimed at helping our young people gain a deeper respect for the dignity of every human person. And then that can only bear fruit and great outcomes for the service to our local community and beyond. So next I'm gonna invite uh, Rick and, and George up to go through our strategic pillars. Okay, so I will uh, lead you through each of the six pillars and then George here will uh, give you a little more insight into each of those and how the goals and objectives were formed. So the first strategic pillar was securing, sustaining, and measured growth in enrollment. 
So some goals that came out of that. Streamline the enrollment process for grades pre-K through 12. Develop a community network in Oneida and Herkimer County and surrounding areas. Develop an inclusive target specific marketing platform and improve student retention for continued sustainable student success. And you can see for each of these pillars as well um, that each goal is marked S uh, for short term, M for uh, midway, um, or L for a long term goal. Thank, thank, thank you, Rick. Rick, thanks very much. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm, my name is George Nemi. I want to thank uh, Liz Kearns, Chair of the Board of Trustees, and the trustees for. Uh, asking me to help with the strategic planning process. It's been an honor to, to work with the, street, the, the planning committee and uh, really happy to be here tonight to introduce the strategic plan for the first time. I will say before I comment on strategic pillar number one and the specific goals, um, I, I want to acknowledge the work of the, the committee. They worked incredibly hard and were ver very thoughtful in the process and this is their plan. Um, and uh, they own it and they feel very good and positive about it and our, I want to do also say that um, <clears throat> it, it's, it's pretty ambitious um, to be really honest and candid with you. It's going to take all hands on deck. It's going to take an entire Notre Dame schools community to really make it succeed and it's going to take three to five years for everything to be fully, um, uh, fully planned and, and, and uh, implemented. So we're going to need the patient support guidance and help of everyone in the Notre Dame schools community. That's alumni, parents, friends, um, and, um, and everyone else who cares about Catholic education in this, in this region. So a, a quick point about enrollment management. It's probably the single most important thing uh, the uh, Strategic Planning Committee focused on and uh, will uh, require a lot of work. In fact, each of these strategic pillars will require a specific uh, working committee or task force to implement. Uh, some of the things, as Rick pointed out, um, uh, will be you know, more short term within the next year, some more medium term within the next three years, and long term over the next five years. So each of them will have a specific task force group. But enrollment management, just a, a couple quick words about that, is um, we, we cannot survive on the, um, what I would refer to as the, the gatekeeper uh, model of, uh, of recruitment and, and admissions where you wait for people to come through the front door. There has to be a thoughtful, uh, deliberate um, strategy to reach out to the families throughout um, the area to uh, really talk to them about the distinctive elements and nature of the school and why they should consider Notre Dame schools versus the other educational options that are available to them. So it, it requires um, a director of admissions. It requires this very specific strategic marketing plan and strategy um, across all platforms, digital and otherwise. Um, it also requires us to develop a, a strong network in the community uh, for, for there to be advocates out there to make sure that you not only promote the schools, but you talk about the schools. Uh, you uh, build a network throughout Herkimer Oneida counties um, at all levels, um, at the, the levels with the churches, with business leaders, with alumni, uh, take advantage of all of the networking uh, that you have available to you over the rich history of the three Catholic schools, St. Francis de Sales, Utica Catholic Academy, and of course, Notre Dame. So there are many of those alumni still in this area, and uh, they can be a resource in an alumni network that helps support the admissions process. And finally, um, it's not lost and shouldn't be lost on anyone, the importance of retention. Uh, it's one thing to get a student to enroll. It's another thing to uh, keep them here and to, uh, for them to thrive as students uh, intellectually, personally, uh, socially, uh, athletically, uh, depending on what they're involved in. And that takes an enterprise uh, of, of t faculty, staff, coaches, and mentors to make sure that they are getting all the support that they need. Uh, academically and otherwise, so that they stay here and they, they not just stay here, but they thrive. And uh, so retention is an important part of enrollment management as well. So the, st the second strategic pillar, delivering a rigorous, challenging, and rewarding academic and co-curricular program. The goals include preparing the diverse modern learner <coughs> for educational, career, and life success, 
developing and maintaining a rigorous instructional curriculum designed to maximize student growth and achievement, and equip teachers and staff with the tools required to implement best practices, instructional strategies, and enhance educational outcomes for all students. Thank you, Rebecca. So, um, at the heart, of course, of the school is, this is, these, this is an educational institution, and so, when you think about, I'll think about myself and, and when I was in school, um, the world has changed pretty dramatically. And the way students uh, learn today has changed pretty dramatically. And the way teachers teach has changed pretty dramatically, uh, specifically with such things as technologies. Notre Dame schools, like all other schools, have to be responsive to the rules and guidelines of, uh, that are set forth by the New York State Department of Education because it's a state in which you live and thrive, uh, by, by the Middle States Accreditation Commission, uh, by the, the standards set forth by the, uh, the, 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 the Catholic schools of the diocese, the superintendent of Catholic schools for the diocese of Syracuse, and also to be responsive to the, today's modern world because your mission is to obviously prepare students to go out and, and have lives of usefulness and reputation, and they have to be prepared to be responsive in a modern society. So that's absolutely critical. And that, of course, means a, a constant review of the curriculum to make sure that the students, uh, that, the, that it's responsive to not only the students' needs, but that it's responsive to preparing them for life after Notre Dame, for example, college or uh, the trades and the professions, wherever they choose to go uh, post-secondary uh, education. And it also requires, we, we have to be responsive to the teachers. They work tirelessly every day to teach the children, to, to mentor them, but they also have the tools, they also need the tools uh, to, be, um, you know, to be responsive to the changes in curriculum and the needs that require uh, curricula to change uh, at every level, beginning uh, from pre-K all the way through grade 12. So those resources are going to be really important. And if Notre Dame is to, the Notre Dame schools are to uh, establish themselves in a very, to, as a distinctive institutional educational experience from the public school options, then it has to also be sure that it has the modern tools in the classroom, um, in the laboratories, um, and also in the co-curricular programs and experiential learning opportunities that are absolutely essential today and um, are really something that colleges and universities look for uh, for admissions and future employers do as well. So those, all of this obviously requires resources uh, available for preparing teachers and having professional development for them, but also to make sure that the uh, the classrooms are equipped with all the technology that's es essential uh, and that all of the resources are available for students so that they, they live, learn, and they thrive in the academic environment. But this is really critically important. The third pillar, enriching the student experience through enhanced co-curricular and extracurricular programs. Goals include expand the options of co-curricular activities, improve communication between and among students, faculty, and families, and formalize character building through Catholic faith focus. We didn't uh, say this earlier, but it, it is it's part of Pillar 6. So throughout all of these pillars and the, the goals and the objectives that are related to them, uh, we never lose sight of the, fa of the Catholic Foundation uh, and heritage of, the, of Notre Dame schools and how it influences uh, the students, the, the lives of the students here in and out of the classroom and even in the pl on the playing field. And in the area of co-curricular and extracurricular activities, um, it's, this is probably one of the most important things in terms of enhancing the student experience outside the classroom. A co-curricular typically in an academic setting refers to activities that are related to the academic course of study but are outside the classroom, so it might be experiential learning. Uh, learn as you do, uh, different, uh, related to and associated with the coursework, but different from that as well. And I think you all, you all know extracurricular activities. And for Notre Dame schools, uh, one of the biggest challenges is to be able to offer, and this, this ties directly to enrollment, by the way, a uh, diverse offering of extracurricular activities. Some students want to play sports, 
some students are interested in music and the performing arts, and some students uh, are interested in esports. And all of these things, of course, require resources, but they are, they are actually a very essential to the way in which the school can attract and, retrain, uh, attract and retain uh, other, other families and students who might not have necessarily thought about Notre Dame as an option for their children. So really building a robust and supporting a robust program of curricular and co-curricular uh, and extracurricular activities uh, for, that complement the academic program is gonna be really essential to recruitment uh, and to retention and also to ensuring uh, a, a richer um, uh, student experience uh, right from uh, pre-K all the way up to, through grades 12. But again, as you can imagine, being able, you can't be all things to all people. I, the, the, the task force and the board is gonna to have to figure out, you know, among all of the options or array of possibilities that are available, what makes the most sense for Notre Dame schools and how, how do we pay for it? Uh, but, but there's no question that this is um, uh, really important. And as, as, the, as Amy Sansone mentioned a minute ago from the surveys, parents are hoping for more of these opportunities for the students, and I think they would have a direct impact on, on attracting new students in recruitment, so. And I would just build off of what George said for that last part, too, is the school system, obviously, we're very keenly aware of this, and as Amy shared, um, even with the parent survey, we know that this is, you know, the biggest challenge for any school is the co-curriculars and extracurriculars, but we've already started, um, as many of you, especially at the junior, senior high level, may have noticed, uh, with the addition of new electives, um, trying to make more uh, career ready uh, types of electives through Utica University bridge programs, college partnerships. Um, you know, last year was the first year in several years that we had a school musical program. Um, so we were happy to get that up and running and again building off of that this year. And it's very it's encouraging to see, at least from my perspective, and I'm sure from many others' perspectives uh, out there as well, um, that it's a not only a good sized group of students participating in those arts programs, but they're young. And so we're seeing good promise for the future. So just a couple of things to show that a lot of these, especially the short term, uh, goals that are listed here are things that you know our team is excited by and we're already working towards as a school so just something to make note of the fourth strategic pillar securing building and sustaining a financial model that ensures fiscal health and care and nature of capital assets so the goals that derive from that goal number one develop programs to attract evaluate and retain quality faculty staff and administration Goal two, expand and revise advancement and marketing organizational structure to incorporate grade school, junior high, and high school into single operating unit. Goal three, review and evaluate need for new facilities and improvements to existing buildings and grounds. And goal four, ensure future financial stability through sound financial practices and data-driven projections. I'd say this is my favorite pillar. Um, because I think this pillar coupled with the first one on enrollment management is really at the, the heart and soul of the future of the schools and their ability to thrive um, with the resources that are required. And they also point to the fact that in my opening uh, comments about how it, it, it takes a village, that uh, alumni, parents, and friends have to be involved in, at every step of the way uh, through giving, volunteering, attending, and connecting, what I call the four channels of engagement. Um, the, I think it's really important to acknowledge um, when we, we talk about, um, when Rick read the, the goal on advancement, um, uh, which really means alumni and development, we should acknowledge that, that we are, are suffering a little bit from the sins of our forefathers in terms of uh, the uh, amount of time that's elapsed over the course of the history of the schools uh, where we have not done a good job of engaging alumni in the life of the school. And that has to change and change pretty dramatically. Uh, and of course it takes time and it takes resources, but we have to start somewhere. And I know Donna Williams is doing an admirable job of really be beginning uh, to help build that process and build bridges with alumni to get them more involved in the life of the school. 
which is really, really critically important, I think, uh, for all the reasons that I, th that I think are fairly, fairly obvious. So that's going to be really important uh, uh, pillar uh, for us to, to, to think about here. The, the uh, getting, um, getting a handle on, um, on the physical plant of the building, I think you know, having a campus master plan in terms of taking care of the original building and the buildings and grounds and envisioning in the future what you might add to the campus grounds by way of facilities, athletic facilities and other facilities and taking it, that's, that's something that every school needs and it's something that has to be built up over time. But taking care of your physical plant and your assets, your capital equipment are going to be, is going to be really important as well. Um, we have to be really straightforward. Fundraising is going to be really important, uh, both in terms of meeting the annual operating expense for the school, but especially in terms of building the resources that provide Notre Dame schools with the ability to offer scholarships and financial aid to the families who want to send their children to Notre Dame schools but are unable to do so financially, um, and both on the need side and on the merit side, because you also want to be in a position to attract really, really bright kids um, who are academically talented to come to Notre Dame schools as well. And, um, but offering merit scholarships as well uh, would be important. So the whole arena of, of advancement of alumni relations and marketing, the, the need to um, invest in your buildings and your grounds um, over the long term, is, uh, the task force that will be assembled for each of these strategic pillars We'll take a look at what are the comprehensive needs for the school and, and then try to assemble in priority order uh, what needs to be addressed first um, and then work, work backwards from that uh, in, in uh, recognizing that we can't do everything all at once, obviously. And in terms of fiscal management and budgeting and budget forecasting, every dollar is so precious and uh, building uh, systems and processes and practices uh, that align with, uh, you know, the best practices out there for how to do fiscal forecasting and, and really understand the budget and, and plan the budget and do multi-year forecasting, uh, which includes multiple sources of revenue, are going to be really absolutely critical. Um, so this is a really, I would say, an absolutely vital pillar in the whole scheme of, the, of Vision 2029. And uh, at the heart of it is our ability to, to secure uh, diversified uh, f sources of funding, which are both, which include enrollment, uh, contributions from alumni, parents, and friends, and gifts and grants uh, from private foundations, corporations, and, and even the government. So that's, that's strategic pillar number four. And speaking of alumni, I mean, as George said, there's definitely work to do <coughs> in terms of engaging the wider audience out there of alums. Um, that we haven't had the connection with in a while. But what, one of my favorite parts of the strategic planning process was actually in those three days sitting down with the members of the planning committee, realizing that several of the staff members and parents that were represented were alum, self-included. Um, and you know, I, I quipped at the uh, raffle the other day, you know, I'm looking beyond 2029 to my daughter's graduation in 2039 and my son's in 2041. So, you know, there is, you know, a great deal of um, interest in this process and there's, you know, a great enthusiasm. There's a spark that's ignited in many of us. You know, we care about this very deeply. We care about Notre Dame. So we're invested in this very heavily just to kind of give you that perspective as well. And for strategic pillar number five, visionary institutional leadership. Goal number one, under the guidance of the administration, governing board, and volunteer leaders, focus on teaching and learning that is authentically Catholic and academically excellent. Goal two, define and enhance the role of the Board of Trustees to assist in advancing the mission and vision of Notre Dame schools. Goal three, study the process for the creation of a central administrative office to streamline operations. And goal four, cultivate and enhance the relationship with area parishes. Thank you. So the, um, the subject of visionary leadership um, is for any institution, whether it's uh, pre-K through 12 or college or university, um, really is so vitally dependent on leadership. And the strategic planning committee 
looked at leadership broadly, not just for you. Know, typically, when you think of leadership, you think of the principal um, or you think of the chair of the board. Uh, but we, we look at leadership, we looked at leadership really across the institutions uh, to include uh, teachers because teachers are leaders, coaches, coaches are leaders, uh, uh, mentors, staff are leaders, uh, we, uh, parents are leaders, alumni can and should be leaders. So we try to look comprehensively at the, ro the, the, ro the, the concept of leadership and how it influences, you know, first and foremost, the academic enterprise. How all the leaders come together to make the educational experience a, a really a rich and rewarding one, uh, which is strategic, which is the goal number one under this pillar. But we also um, recognize that the Board of Trustees, um, which is uh, responsible for the care and nurture of, this institu of these institutions, and there are opportunities for the board to play a really important role through the doors they can open, through the relationships they can cultivate, through the resources they can either give directly or that they can help get uh, for, the, for, the, for the strategic plan and to ensure the strategic plan's success. Um, building a framework for identifying future trustees who bring uh, different views and perspectives and life's experiences to the enterprise so that the schools always benefit from the not from the oversight wisdom now, you know you've probably heard the phrase time talent and treasure and we want the board really to to be responsive in that regard as well so that's that's going to be a really important part of it uh, the building uh, relationships with the area parishes and the leadership that our our priests and and other religious leaders let's not forget Notre Dame schools is a Catholic institution but you are benefit from the experience of the families that enroll their children here who are not of the Catholic faith, but are very happy to have their children here. And we must be thoughtful and inclusive about the many different religious communities that now happen to be in the Mohawk Valley. I know when my parents emigrated from Lebanon in, in the early 1950s, uh, this area was predominantly Christian and, and predominantly Catholic. And if you look at the landscape that has changed through the immigration waves over the last five or six decades, you know, we're a very different community than we were 50 or 60 years ago. But Notre Dame is a welcoming institution, and we have to be thoughtful about leadership broadly defined uh, as it relates to strengthening the institution. And finally, I will say that we are exploring, with the, the Board of Trustees is exploring, uh, as is the case with some other Catholic schools in the Diocese of Syracuse and in New York State, um, the principal, the president principal model. And the concept here is that um, we will be looking at the possibility of attracting an individual um, who brings um, tremendous leadership experience to serve in the role of president of Notre Dame schools, distinct from the role of the principal uh, of the junior senior high school and of the elementary school who will function on managing the day-to-day, -day, the academics, the faculty, the students and day-to-day -day operation of the schools uh, and, the, and the president will be focusing externally on cultivating the most important relationships that will really be pivotal and changing and having a profound impact on the future of the schools in terms of its resources, in terms of engaging alumni, uh, which is long overdue, uh, and really um, helping to promote the brand of Notre Dame schools throughout uh, the area and the region. So we'll be looking at that as well. And all of these efforts together really uh, come together under the guise of, uh, of uh, visionary leadership for Notre Dame schools. Strategic Pillar 6, Notre Dame's Catholic history, heritage, and identity, and its role in faith-based private education in the Mohawk Valley for the future. Goal number one, build and implement an adult ministry curriculum for staff, parents, and alumni to ensure a strong future involvement of Catholic and other religious laity and the life of the schools. Goal two, continue to create, communicate, and sustain a unified area-wide Catholic education philosophy that includes all area Catholic parishes and other religious institutions. And goal three, assist students on their faith journeys to foster strong personal relationships with their faith, to minister to others, and to live out their future through faith. 
I think this uh, pillar is a, a particularly emotional one um, for virtually all the members of the Strategic Planning Committee. And um, I, I challenge them during our discussions uh, to think about the unique challenge of celebrating, promoting, embracing the, the heritage of Catholic education and Catholic faith and how it um, uh, and the, its underpinnings and everything Notre Dame schools do and being sensitive to the importance of being open and welcoming to families who, uh, who are not of the Catholic faith but actually respect and appreciate the foundations of Catholic faith um, in an educational environment. And I use the example not to compare Notre Dame schools with Georgetown or Boston College or any of the Jesuit institutions, but I said if they, they can be truly Catholic as an institution and, and maintain their focus and foundation as a, as a Catholic institution, but yet be welcoming to uh, students and families from around the world, from every different faith and walk of life, there's no reason why Notre Dame can't do it. And that not only strengthens the experience that your students have here while at Notre Dame, but it also really does a lot to um, attract families who otherwise might not consider um, uh, Notre Dame as an option for, an educational option for their children. So this is a, this is a really important pillar. Uh, it's not to be, uh, it, it really, it, it underpins the other, um, the other five. And in fact, one of the members of the Strategic Planning Committee asked me when uh, I assembled all the information from the discussions that we had that uh, uh, Mr. Hensel referred to uh, you know, at the beginning, um, and asked me why pillar number six was, at, uh, you know, was last. And I said, they're all, they're all equal. Um, that it doesn't make any difference what position they're listed in. They're all concurrently equal, and they all have to be focused on at the same time. So this is a really particularly important one um, that I think uh, adds to the distinctive element of what makes a Notre Dame education. So with that, now this is a brief overview. Um, the work of the committees uh, will get underway to, to begin to implement all of the things that Rick and I shared with you tonight. Uh, we're hoping uh, to put the strategic plan in its entirety on the website so you can look at the goals and objectives that are associated with e the, the objectives that are associated with each of the goals under each strategic pillar. And we make a commitment to provide regular periodic updates on the, uh, the progress that is being made as the committee work gets underway. Um, so we will pause here and invite you to ask questions. And we would also say if you don't have a question tonight, but you think of it tomorrow or the next day or next week, make sure you provide us with that question so we can give you an answer. Because uh, again, this is, a, this is a community effort and we want everybody to be involved. So with that, I'll be happy to answer, any of us would be happy to answer any questions. I think there's a podium set up for that, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Someone needs to break the ice. <laughs> Come right up to the podium. Yep. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you for developing this plan. Um, I appreciate greatly the need for inclusivity, um, but as at Catholic and a graduate of Catholic schools, I do believe our mission um, in some way uh, should reflect that it is a Catholic school. I understand that we're, we're encouraging other faiths to attend the school, but I think a mission of a Catholic school should be separate and apart from um, a New Hartford school district or Proctor schools. Um, I looked up New Hartford's, it's pretty much very similar to what this is, and I think Notre Dame should be um, different from that. I think it's very, I think everything else is great that's in the mission, but I think it's really important to not forget or water down that um, we're a Catholic institution. So. Yep. And also I would just encourage, um, even though the pillars may all be equal, um, I still think you should lead off um, with your faith. So, thank you. 
Could you repeat that last part because you're, you're, you're speaking softly. Sure. <laughs> I think even though all the pillars may be equal, I think it's very important that the pillars start off with our Catholic faith because that it is um, a sacrifice for many people that are coming to this Notre Dame and they're doing it for their Catholic faith to instill it in their children. And we want to make sure that in, in part of our Catholic faith has always been to be Catholic and to be open and to be welcoming of other faith. Um, but we, should, we shouldn't be afraid to mention it in our mission statement um, or to water down that we are a Catholic school. And I, I credit you, you all do a wonderful job. I appreciate everything you're doing day to day, um, bringing the Catholic faith. And, and I do want to make one special note when you talk about the facilities, um, I've mentioned it to Mrs. Rossi, but I have to say I'm extremely pleased with the efforts that she's made in the elementary school in painting the stage, doing the doors, doing the hallways. Um, it's been really remarkable, um, the efforts that she has done in the elementary school to keep the great the elementary school that I attended so many years ago um, a wonderful, warm um, place, inviting, and it really still um, makes you feel like a good strong Catholic walking through those hallways. And I'm so privileged to have my children um, attending the elementary and also up here at the junior senior high. So thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for your affirming comments. Um, and, and I will invite others to respond as well. But I, I can assure you um, there was no appetite by the uh, Strategic Planning Committee to water down anything to do with, with uh, the, the Catholic mission of Notre Dame schools as a distinctive element. Uh, you make reference to comparing it to, you know, the public school offerings. They're, 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 you know, they felt very strongly about that. And I think, as, as evidenced by the fact, I don't know, uh, uh, Rick would know the percentage, the number of families who enroll here uh, who are not Catholic actually do so because of, of, of the, the Catholic foundations of your school. So I, I think your comments are very affirming, both in terms of the Catholic faith piece of it and what you said about the elementary school. And so thank you for that. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the members of the committee would agree that they're not, they're, there's no desire to diminish the, the, Catholic, the, the Catholic nature of Notre Dame school. So I, I think you would agree, right? Yeah, I, I would agree. And I would just add also, if I can go back to it here, um, if we look at all of these things together, the mission, the vision, and the values, I think the values qualify that. Uh, piece of the mission. Again, the virtues of faith, hope, and charity um, are guiding us, and that's core to our beliefs as Catholics. So I, I would agree with what George is saying, that we're definitely not shying away from it. In fact, um, every member of the committee uh, was very passionate um, that we maintain that identity as a Catholic school. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Step up here real quick. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. And just going back to the, the mission statement. So it's an important uh, detail, and I think God is to be found in the details, but it's the first time a mission statement that we've referred to Notre Dame schools as Notre Dame Catholic schools. So that's been missing from our branding all this time, and it was the discovery of our strategic planning team to say from the get-go at the beginning of our mission statement, we want to be defined as Notre Dame Catholic schools. And you'll see that come out with our branding in the future. Uh, they don't want just be Notre Dame schools, it'll be Notre Dame Catholic schools, because over 96% of responding parents to the SWOT analysis said uh, that that's the reason why they pay for this education. So might as well stand firmly in that tradition. Thank you, Father. More questions? Uh, my name is Matthew Shedd. Um, questions for you. Your pillars seem quite ambitious. Um, I was curious to know if you're going to um, try to be more targeted and focus on what's going to be uh, feasible in the, in the short term. Um, also, what does success look like? Uh, for example, like enrollment, what do you envision what success is going to be for that? Are you, is it a, a sp specific percentage that you're looking into? Um, and also, if you could elaborate more on what the role of a president would be and what value that brings to the school. I'd appreciate that. Yep. Very smart man. Thank you for those. Uh, that's a multi-layered question. Um, uh, I'm glad you recognize that it's a very ambitious plan. I, I did mention that uh, a little while ago. Um, in fact, I think I, I told Liz Kearns at, at the, when the, the draft was first uh, prepared that I was, I was a little nervous because it, was a, it is a very ambitious plan. And, it, uh, it uh, requires a lot. I think um, 
what will happen to answer your question specifically is when the work group, there'll be work groups for each of the strategic pillars that will be assembled, you know, really like a task force, because just to say that this is what we want to do is not obviously clearly not sufficient. We, we have to actually have to get the work done and people have to do the work. And what they will do is in that process define um, which uh, of the pillars and which of the goals within those pillars become priority. I can tell you top line um, uh, because enrollment and finances are so pivotal to the ability, the ability of the schools to be stable and to thrive in order for a lot of the other things to actually take place, those will probably percolate up to be the most important first. Um, and within that, those task forces, based on all the data that's available, uh, will create specific targeted goals. So for example, in the case of in, uh, uh, admissions, um, there will you know, be, the committee will look at the data of, of admission statistics in terms of applications and admissions over the, net, over the past three to five years as an example and set some specific targets. Those have not been done yet, but that will be the work of the task force going forward um, uh, as the work gets underway. So, and then the role of the president, um, uh, really the idea here is there, there's, there are two different really uh, potential concepts for president. One is to be the CEO of the, in, of the Notre Dame Catholic Schools and for the principals to be the chief operating officers. But in this instance, at least initially, we want the president of the school to be the chief external affairs officer, to spend his or her time uh, visiting alumni. Let's remember, there are a lot of alumni of Notre Dame schools who don't even live in the area anymore. And they also need to be brought into the fold if they, are, if they believe strongly in Catholic education and want to see it thrive here in Oneida County. Uh, and we need someone who's unencumbered with the day-to-day -day administration. Uh, it takes a lot to run a school and to take care of the students, uh, to be unencumbered by that and to report directly to the board and to be out there uh, meeting with foundations and corporations, cultivating relationships and actually soliciting major principal and plan gifts for the school. So they'll be the chief external affairs officer actually and um, uh, uh, support uh, publicly the work of the advancement office by, by meeting with donors all the time. Really, it's a full, as, as a former vice president for advancement at Utica University, I can tell you it's more than a full-time job to be out there. If, you, if you're gonna be successful raising money, you've gotta have somebody out there meeting with alumni, parents, and friends, corporations, and foundations all the time. So that'll be the principal role of the president. I hope that helps, Matthew. Other questions? With regards to the task force and committees that you outlined, what's the best form with which we can stay updated in terms of some of the measurables and action plans that are gonna be developed against these and how we can stay in touch with uh, understanding what the measurables are and progress towards them? Yeah. Great question. Um, it'll be uh, the responsibility of the Strategic Planning Committee uh, and uh, reporting to the board uh, to post, um, to, to uh, provide uh, quarterly updates on the work that's being done. Um, once the goals and the timelines for each of the, the objectives under each of the goals have been established, um, those would be, uh, we, we'll, we'll come up with a reporting format, uh, probably both on the website and then through periodic communications, both in digital and print, uh, on a quarterly or some, yeah, probably on a quarterly basis so that uh, alumni, uh, parents and friends can be informed as to the progress that we're actually making. We're not just gonna have this town hall and then say, you know, thanks for coming and we'll keep you posted. We have to be deliberate about making sure we inform you. but. Uh, the first step is for the committees to be formed and for them to identify specific goals that are, are um, we want them to be reach goals, but they want, we want them to be attainable too. We don't, we don't want anyone to be, uh, any committee to be presenting goals that are, are not reachable or attainable or just are, are too far-fetched. Not that they would do, not that they would be far-fetched, but you know what I mean, uh, beyond the reach of what we could do. So that's, that's what we're thinking. Um, if you have suggestions uh, otherwise, um, you know, this is, 
this should be an interactive process. We want, uh, we want constituents to be asking questions. Um, I think we'll probably figure out, I, I know how easy it'll be to do, uh, is to have a, 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 a portal on the, on the website where uh, you can pose questions uh, if you, you know, on the plan and the progress of the plan, and, and hopefully we'll have a page or two that will actually provide updates as they become available. Okay. What else? Hello. Hi. My name is Michael Vitrick. And um, I think the most important thing, can I take the mic? Mike's got the mic, careful. Anyway, um, I got a sense, corny sense of humor. The most important thing, I think, is that um, uh, mentorship, mentorship. And I think you, you hit it on the head when you talked about um, teachers and coaches, because um, if I look back at my life, there's a guy on Proctor Park that was my mentor. His name is E.J. Herman, okay? And he was probably one of the best people, mentorship in this entire area. I'll tell you that, hands down. But before I want to, I want to move on with my, what my daughter does. My daughter is a license of uh, LS, S, LCSW, okay? And she's out in Buffalo. And she's, we talk about issues that are going on in the schools. Now she's also right now in public school, okay? And she, we talk about public school. But she also is very involved in life. Now life has to do with Catholic and all different types of religion, okay? The, the life, and she's part of this life in middle school, and she's telling me the issues that these kids are going through right now. And it's amazing at um, how many people through the internet, uh, through bullying, they want to kill themselves. They're talking about uh, you got to be careful when you're picking up the first drink and what's going to happen to them. I mean, basically, if you can keep children away from alcohol and drugs, I may tell you, you're going to have some kids that are going in the right direction heading to college instead of going the other direction. So I, I think that mentorship is so important, and I feel that I learned by life scene. I didn't realize all that she was doing. And then I talked to one of my friends out in Minnesota, and she said, he says, that is national. He sa she says, she's doing a fantastic job. That's all I have. Yeah. Thank you uh, very Thank much. You. LCSW, Licensed Clinical Social Worker. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't have much more to add to that uh, because I think you said it very eloquently. This is probably weighing on the mind. I'll you know, certainly let uh, you know, Rick uh, uh, talk to this, uh, weighing on the minds of the, um, of the principals, of the teachers, of the coaches who worry about these kids every day and uh, worry about their uh, well-being. In fact, uh, you know, earlier at the Board of Trustees meeting, we were talking about um, foundations funding uh, programs that are, uh, have to do with the social determinants of, of health and providing counselors in the school, and uh, some of which actually happens here at Notre Dame that's funded by a foundation. So again, these are resources that are required, but I, 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 I also think that when you think about mentorship, um, you know, it, it doesn't also have, it doesn't have to only be LCSWs. It can be, it is coaches, and you know, we'd like to see more alumni involved in the life. When we talk about alumni engagement, and I used the, 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 the phrase earlier, giving, volunteering, attending, and connecting, alumni can be uh, a really important piece of that. Parents can be a really important piece of it. It's a whole network. These, uh, the children today need support in and out of the classroom, and so I think Notre Dame absolutely has to be, and I know is committed to, but absolutely has to be, uh, reinforce its commitment to you know, the, 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 the health and well-being of their students in and out of the classroom. So, Don, I don't know if you want to say anything else. Yeah, right? I would just add that, you know, in that, in that respect, we really do set ourselves apart from um, our friends in public education. And I think of a couple programs that immediately come to my mind, Campus Ministry, um, you know, an outstanding program, definitely mentorship. Um, is happening in that program, ROTC, um, you know, another hallmark of a Notre Dame education. Uh, we're also very fortunate to be, you know, a rarity among even public schools and having our own uh, school resource officer who's more than uh, just a safety officer for us. And, you know, she's 
um, trained in conflict resolution and a lot of those uh, peer issues as well that she's constantly working with our students through some of those issues. So um, we're really proud of you know what we're doing um, and sort of setting ourselves apart in that respect and, and how um, kids are mentored, how staff are mentored in those programs. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Logan Shedd. I go to school here. A lot of these people that have come here tonight really care about the school. My question is, I have listened to the pillars of expectations. Um, are you going to lower those pillars um, at the sake of accepting people that come here? Uh, I'm not sure. When you say, I, I, maybe a point of clarification, when you say lower the pillars for students who come here, please explain. I'm not sure I understand your question. We're expected excellence in and out of the classroom. Would you lower that expectation for the sake of enrollment? Ah, well, that's a great question. Um, the, there, there's probably always a temptation when the pressures of enrollment are where they might be to do that. I, and I, I will let others here speak because I, I, I'm, just, I'm just the aide de camp. I'm not, I'm not the decision maker, but I will tell you I didn't see any appetite among members of the, uh, the, the Strategic Planning Committee or the Board of Trustees to do any such thing, that the standards must be the highest possible, not only because you want to make sure that Notre Dame Catholic schools are distinctive from the edu other educational um, uh, experience or opportunities here in the region, but because the students here deserve and uh, to have um, the highest standards. They be, need to be held to the highest standards in order for them to achieve not only here in school but in life. But again, I, I, I didn't hear any such, such consideration about lowering the standards. I'm, I'm really glad you asked that question because uh, I certainly don't think that's the case, but I think you would affirm and Father Jason and others would affirm it as well too. Yeah, I would agree, Logan, and it was an excellent question, so yeah. I appreciate you bringing it up. Um, no, to the short answer to your question is no. We do still, uh, actually we've revamped um, over the last couple of years um, our admissions process. So whereas before it might have just been an application came to the principal's desk um, and as long as the records looked you know, acceptable, we're signing off on it. We actually have a committee of people that um, look at every application that comes through now. Um, and we actually meet with new applicants to review with them their academic, uh, uh, progress at their other school, wherever they're transferring from. Um, and we also uh, put in calls with the school guidance counselors um, and, and things of that nature to kind of get a well-rounded understanding of who the student is. Um, and of course, you know, expectations are always outlined. Um, we do also have our profile of a graduate, as you may be um, aware of, and that's on our website as well. So, you know, we're always measuring every student uh, currently enrolled and prospective um, by that matrix, that matrix, you know, here's our profile of a graduate. When you graduate Notre Dame High School, this is what that diploma means. Um, so we're always very mindful of that. I have to agree. I we are set aside um, the students that come here, the teachers that instruct here, and the jobs that are done here. It is very well done, and that I expect that to be implement, implemented. Thank you. Thank you. This is a really uh, great question, and I will, I will just add one, one additional point. Uh, if, if I have my druthers and if, if, the, if the schools are successful, um, we, we hope we'll find one or two donors who actually uh, will support uh, merit scholarships so that you can actually, uh, in addition to need-based scholarships, so you can actually attract academically, really highly academically talented students to elevate the profile. Of, of, the, uh, of the students here, not, not diminish it. So I'm glad you asked that question. George? Yes. Lou Raya, how are you? Hi, Lou. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Well, thank you, and I want to... I told you not to ask any questions tonight. I'm not, not going to ask any questions. I'm going to just <laughs> see what kind of programs you got going on. Right, first of all, I want to thank the board for putting this together, and Father Hage and 
all the members of the board and the superintendent for coming here because we really love this school, okay? Uh, it changed my life, made a big difference in my life. And um, the one thing that you mentioned, George, was giving gifts and grants. And I have talked to some of the board members here. I met with some of the uh, principals. I've always talked to Rich and Spadafore and a couple other people. It's so important, as you know, George, in development at the colleges that you were at, at, Dart, at, uh, at Brown, at uh, Hamilton, and Utica College, that the development office, the gifts the, and the giving, it's so important in reconnecting with the alumni, which this school hasn't done at all. I put together, I put together a, a reunion, and they handed me a reunion sheet with only, I had 208 young men graduate and only maybe about 100, 110 had their names and addresses on there. It's so important, as you know, George, and what you've done at Utica College and the other schools you've, you've, uh, you've been at, to reconnect with the alumni and not just to you know, say, okay, this one's doing a good job. You have to reconnect with them. We have alumni that have been very, very successful. I have um, uh, one of my uh, classmates, he runs a company, I think they're doing about 100 to 150 million a year out in Massachusetts. All his brothers went to school here. They're from Rome, I'm not gonna mention a name. But you mentioned grants, you mentioned giving, and you mentioned gifts. What are you doing as far as the grants go? Do you have a grant writer that can go out to these foundations? Secondly, what are you doing as for, what plan do you have to kind of reconnect with the alumni? Uh, one of my uh, classmates, uh, I, we met with Tom Van Moes uh, eight years ago. We, uh, we donated four years of a search engine and the school let it run out because we wanted them and also our other alumni to be, when they had their class reunions, to come in and use it. I have put together with my, with my class, we've got all our lists completed. We looked everybody up. But this is so important. In order, in order to make this mission go, on all these different profiles you have, you have to have giving gifts and grants to do it. And you have to have a, I don't know if you have an alumni um, committee here, if you don't, you should get one together, and they should make who's ever doing whatever you appoint accountable so that you, we could keep the school open and going, okay? I know that um, what they've done at CBA over the years, I talked to some of the alumni there, and what they have as far as their, their, their uh, fund balance is phenomenal. I know that some of the other schools, I know your superintendent, at uh, Grimes and at Ludden, I know they have, they have problems, but the one thing that they did at CBA is they kept in touch with their alumni. They kept them involved. And because, because when the Zaverian brothers left here in 76, some of, the, some of our alumni have a bad taste. I mean, we, we were disciplined pretty good over the years. Right, guys? Okay? And, you know, in talking to some of the, uh, my alumni, well, you know, they, but, that's not, what, that's not what's gonna make this go. Is you put together an office with, with someone who writes grants, someone who's gonna be able to make calls and reconnect with the alumni, and I think you're gonna be very successful, okay? And I think Mission 2029 is gonna be very successful, okay? I think I said enough. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. I, I think Lou knows me too well. Um, one of, the, um, uh, one, one of my main tasks that the board asked me to do is to work with Donna Williams to actually uh, do, do, to, do just that, is to develop, is to help uh, develop the alumni and development program, the advancement program, which is typically called. Um, and I know I've been in this business for 40 years, and I, I know that when institutions uninvest in the advancement office and the alumni office, the result is exactly what you just outlined, Lou. And you know, Notre Dame schools, no school can afford to do that. Notre Dame schools can least afford to do that. So we're gonna work really hard. Um, uh, the aspiration is to create an alumni council, an, an official alumni council with bylaws and a constitution, um, to have the alumni actively involved in the life of the school, um, to develop a major principal and plan giving program, um, 
We do have uh, a person on a, on a volunteer basis to do grant writing. Just had a nice conversation with the superintendent tonight at the board meeting about the resources at the, the diocese in Syracuse, uh, the grants office there, and the resources that they can provide free of charge to, to us to look at what possible options and opportunities are out there for, in support of Catholic education through private uh, and family foundations and other, other foundations as well. The work is just getting underway, and Louie, you're correct to acknowledge that we have let a lot of time sadly elapse, but it, there's no time better than now, and it's not too late. So we just have to be disciplined about it. And it's gonna take time because Notre Dame can't hire an advancement office of five or six people tomorrow. So we're gonna to have to build as we go along, but uh, that's absolutely critical. So thanks for that. Other comments, questions? What is the plan to address students and staff who do not adhere to the values that you're talking about today? Current students and current staff who do not adhere to the values in the mission statement and meet the expectations of what we expect from the school. Uh, do you want to take that, Rick? Sure. Yeah, okay. I'll let, I'll let Rick take that. Cause... Yeah, so um, obviously we have a student parent handbook um, that every family receives at the beginning of every school year, just like any school would, um, which outlines all of our expectations and our faculty also have a handbook as well. Um, so I would say we hold them accountable based on the um, uh, things that are outlined in that handbook, consequences that align um, with certain actions and, and things of that nature, but I'm, I'm not sure uh, how much more specific to get, um, rather than, you know, we have consequences in place um, and that we hold people accountable to um, our school handbooks. Was that, Father? I'm just gonna make it up, no, just kidding. Uh, no, so actually the board meeting tonight just talked about what do we do with this plan, and how do we integrate it at every level in our school system? And so one of the next steps the board just agreed to do was to actually sit with our faculty and staff in a, in a very intentional way to move through these different pillars of goals and objectives and to make sure that they fully understand what's being asked of them now so everyone's on the same page and everyone is kind of buying into the same narrative. So that'll take time for us over the next month or so to be able to sit with all the faculty and staff, both at the elementary and junior, senior high school. But we actually plan to do like an open session and working session and workshops with our faculty and staff so everyone's like very clear that this is the new expectation. So I hope that helps a little bit. Thank you, Father. I think mentors can also help. We talked about that earlier. And, and to your very good point about uh, when, when, the, when uh, people fall, off the uh, uh, off the trail, as they say. Um, so hopefully that can be a, bit, a part of it as well. So you mentioned in pillar the enhancement of co-curricular activities, um, and maybe paraphrasing a one Notre Dame. What does that one Notre Dame look like? And sooner than later, there's gonna be a lot of land available down the street. Is that part of the plan for, um, you know, green spaces, maybe trade training, athletics, or building expansion? Well, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to answer part of that question and, and, um, and ask Rick, uh, and maybe others, to answer the other part of of the question that I, I may not just be knowledgeable of. I can tell you that, um, oh, I'm not sure how, how many years ago it was uh, that, I, interestingly enough, before I, I met all of you, uh, I, I did a, uh, a campaign readiness assessment uh, at the time when all of the elementary schools had been consolidated into the, uh, what was the former Our Lady of Lords school and the mandate from the diocese was to move the elementary school onto the Notre Dame campus. And so there was this vision to raise $15 million. 12 of it was to build um, a new addition to house the elementary school, to do some long needed um, maintenance and renovation repairs to the aging physical plant of, of the Notre Dame building. 
um, and also to set aside $3 million for, um, for financial aid. Um, obviously, uh, the campaign that ensued after that, I wasn't involved in the campaign after I presented the study, uh, resulted in this building, but the elementary school stayed down uh, where it, it, it currently is now. You might recall I mentioned the need for the schools to have a campus master plan to hire an architect to actually look at all of the, look at the existing land, the existing buildings. And uh, we just actually did this at Utica University before I retired in, in September 2022. Uh, uh, they came and did a campus master plan that's you know supposed to last 15, 20 years of looking down the road of what you could do, what, what would, you know, with the existing buildings, what's going to need to take place in terms of um, aging physical plant renovation and repair, and then what could happen with the green space that's available in the future uh, and what it might look like to meet the ongoing mission of, the, of, of Notre Dame Catholic Schools. So hopefully, uh, you know, whether it's an alum uh, who is an architect who will devote, uh, dedicate, uh, donate his or her services to do that, or the schools retain someone, that needs to be done. But as part of uh, one Notre Dame, I'm not sure what he meant by that. Do you know him? Rick? Uh, oh, Rick. Um, I'm Jim Salami. I'm the vice chair of the board. You want to come up here, Jim? Um, I, I think I can speak loud enough as it is. Yeah, you. <laughs> um, the, I think. Jim, did he actually come up to the, for the live stream? Okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I was afraid of that. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, I think, Chris, what you were talking about was possibly the land where St. Luke's is. Am I correct? And I, I know that um, being part of the executive committee of the board, um, our board president met with us as the executive committee, and she was asked to provide input being a neighbor to St. Luke's as to how we would love to see that plot of land utilized. And, and I think, Liz, I believe our input was that we wanted to see it in a recreational way. Some, some fields, am I correct? Yes, some fields, some open fields, maybe a softball field for the girls' softball team. Um, some also some mental health facilities to provide support to some of the neighboring districts in this area, not only Notre Dame, but also New York Mills, which is nearby too. So hopefully that's addressing what, what you had asked. Jim, thank you so yeah. much. Thanks for the question. Who's next? These are great questions, by the way. Hi, I'm Mr. G, in case I have many of you guys here. I teach over at the high school. Um, one question I have is, so I've been teaching here three years, and all of the input from the parents and students is very reasonable in terms of wanting more extracurriculars, more classes and such. But on the ground, it seems that what always impedes us is um, we don't have enough men on the ground. And so I was wondering if you had any thought on what the future might be for teacher and uh, faculty uh, recruitment. Because uh, especially in terms of the type of institution we're trying to run here, is it's a very small school, and you're looking for a very specific sort of teacher, which you know, isn't exactly uh, easy to come by nowadays. So I was wondering if you had any uh, inputs on what the future might be for teacher recruitment and other faculty recruitment. You wanna, Rick? Sure. Yeah, so Dana, I think that all goes back to um, the strategic pillars that deal with, uh, actually, it, it, it's all kind of cyclical when you think about it because it goes back to enrollment, it goes back to our finances. Um, you know, once we're able to uh, get the capital that we need and secure the resources that we can, then we can be more flexible um, in recruiting the staff that we need because let's face it, um, we all know uh, our faculty are so dedicated um, and it's a sacrifice for us to be here, all of us um, who work here, but we do that because we love it and we love the school like you do, like I do. Um, so it's definitely on our minds all the time that you know, if we're gonna recruit and attract and maintain um, good quality 
faculty and programs, then we, we need to have a good sound budget that'll support us being able to pay them what they're worth. So that is definitely critical to um, everything that's outlined in this uh, strategic plan. I hope that somewhat answers it at least. Yeah, thank you. It's not that I couldn't answer that question, but I, I, I think that the person when you know someone like Rick, who's the closest to all of you and the faculty, understanding your needs and the needs of the students, um, you know, I, I thought it was best to give him a, a chance to answer that question. He's absolutely right. It, 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 all, the, all these things are cyclical, and it, it, we did um, spend some time, um, I, actually a good deal of time, in the strategic planning meetings talking about you know, the need for resources for teachers, not just for salary, you know, for, for salary and comp you know, for compensation, but also for, for training and the ability uh, of the schools to attract um, qualified teachers who, you know, meet the standards that you, you aspire to um, and then have to worry about them being recruited away for the public schools that can pay them a lot more and uh, can also um, put them into the retirement system for New York State. So. You have some challenges there, and I think it comes back to resources, so, to be sure. <clears throat> Anyone else? No? Well, um, I can't thank you all enough for coming tonight, for asking your very thoughtful questions. We want the questions to continue. Um, this, uh, this is a community uh, enterprise. I want to take, thank um, uh, Liz uh, uh, Kearns and the Board of Trustees for giving me the honor of being involved in the process. Uh, I certainly want to take, uh, thank uh, co-chairs uh, Rick Hensel and Brian McQueen, who was unfortunately unable to be with us. Um, Superintendent Sanson, Amy Sansone from the diocese, Father Jason Hage, who is blessing us every step of the way, and uh, we ask him for our, uh, his continued prayers as we go through and hopefully um, launch this uh, successful effort um, and for all the members of the Strategic Planning Committee. But thank you very much for coming tonight. We really appreciate it. And before, before he steps off, um, just two things. So I want to invite uh, Mrs. Rossi forward just to talk about her experience, uh, you know, being Notre Dame Elementary Principal, um, just what your experience was like with the strategic planning process. Then I'm going to have a little statement about Mr. George and Amy here before we all head out. So Mrs. Rossi, come on up just to give us a summary of, let's give Mrs. Rossi a round of applause. She's amazing. Thank you, Mr. Hensel. I've been sitting a long time, so I needed that assistance. I echo uh, the thanks for, for this evening. Uh, this process, this strategic plan process has been eye-opening and invigorating at the same time. To look at both of our campuses, preschool through 12, and create a vision for all of our boys and girls, I can only say that it has been a blessing. You send your children to us when they are three years old. We hold their hands, and sometimes we hold your hands too, and you let us do that because you believe in us. You believe in Notre Dame schools. What we are seeing tonight is that vision for Notre Dame schools to continue and be the solid, thriving, God-loving schools that they are. One school. And I thank you all for your interest and for bringing these wonderful questions tonight. The people that you see here on the stage and to my left, and uh, Mrs. Sansoni, and also Mr. Don Mills, who we haven't even mentioned you tonight, our deputy superintendent. 
They are with us. And like Mrs. Sanzoni said, she's with us every month at our board meetings. They are so invested and so committed. And I have to thank them. Mr. Nimi, you have led us. And as everybody can see, we have his solid base behind us every step of the way. Thank you so much. I really think we need to recognize him again. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Father Hage, I know that you're going to send us out with a great blessing, so thank you. Thank you everyone thank for you, being here. Absolutely. And for those who are involved with the Strategic Planning Committee, could you please stand at this time just so people can see who was involved? Yes, there they are. Let's give these folks a round of applause. They've so much work and effort into this. And uh, just to echo that word of thanks for Mrs. Rossi, for Mr. George Nimi, uh, it was funny when we started to look at the situation in the fall, and again, I was only on the ground for like three months here. Uh, I realized that the, the situation uh, was serious, and, and so I started to pray uh, a pretty sincere prayer, uh, and then all of a sudden, George Nimi showed up, and uh, just with such generosity, and I really mean that, you're actually an answer to prayer. So uh, again, just thanks so much to, to Mr. George Nimi for his countless hours of work that he's put into developing this plan alongside our strategic planning committee, our administration, faculty, and staff. I mean, there's people involved at every step of the way, so let's give him another round of applause for this great work. All right, let's stand together as we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, conscious of our sinfulness, but aware that we gather in your name. Come to us, remain with us, and enlighten our hearts. Give us light and strength to know your will, to make it our own, and to live it in our lives. Guide us by your wisdom, support us by your power, for you are God sharing the glory of Father and Son. You desire justice for all. Enable us to uphold the rights of others. Do not allow us to be misled by ignorance or corrupted by fear or favor. Unite us to yourself in the bond of love. Keep us faithful to all that is true. As we gather in your name, may we temper justice with love, so that all our discussions and reflections may be pleasing to you and earn the reward promised to good and faithful servants. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us offer all things to our blessed mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you.